What's up my fellow small business supporters? I have news for you all and that is that self-help influencer, business guru, boss babe extraordinaire, Jenna Kutcher has a book coming out. Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys uh, asked for it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome for the first time. I'm Savvy, and this is Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, and that often includes self-help books by business guru and self-help guru influencers, those type of people, discussions of the movement against multi-level marketing companies, as well as the business side of book publishing and all of that. Good to see y'all here. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe, as I have new videos coming out every Friday at 11 a.m. Central, and often other times throughout the week as well. Today's video is not not sponsored, so let me just give myself a really quick plug. As you guys know, the reason I make videos about books and business is that I own a business that produces books. It's called Forever Home Friends. We produce picture books and plushies all about the stories of real rescue dogs finding their way to adoption, except now we are about to release our first cat character, Max the Vampire Kitty. Our cat Halloween themed story and plushie is going to be releasing in September, in time for fall, in time for Halloween, so that is now available for pre-order if you take a look in the description below. And one other thing, it's my birthday. Not my official birthday, as you guys know. My birthday's in September. That's when I'm going to be turning 30, but it is my book birthday. Today is June 8th, 2022. If you guys remember what happened on June 8th, 2021 last year, is that my novel 90s Kids came out. It officially released. If you wanted me to summarize that novel in five words, it would be lesbian back to the future. That's what it would be, lesbian back to the future. So you can get 90s kids linked in the description below on my website, SavvyWritesBooks.com. I have signed copies available or you can get it on Amazon as well in ebook, hardcover, or paperback. All of those things are available. Celebrate my book birthday with me today because this book is about um, a female-female relationship and about the ways that queer culture has changed throughout the years and tries to have a hopeful look at the future. I think uh, this Pride Month would be a good time to get it just because, you know, as an LGBTQ person myself, I have not really been feeling super hopeful this month due to a lot of the really terrible stuff going on in the world, but that's a very serious topic and we're not going into that. Nope, we're gonna talk about boss babes. Jenna Kutcher is someone who people have recommended that I talk about multiple times and I've always kind of had her on a list as like someone I wanna talk about in the future, but didn't quite know when to do it. But now that she has a book coming out, I decided that now is the perfect time. So yes, her book is coming out at the end of the month. I will be reviewing it on this channel. Channel. But first, let's talk about who Jenna Kutcher is, why she's a boss babe, what her book's gonna be about, and what my plans are to review it. Let's go. So this is Jenna Kutcher's website. She has, hurry, doors to the Pinterest lab are closing tonight. Basically, she does the false scarcity thing. She sells courses online. She is an Instagram and Pinterest influencer who sells courses to teach you how to be better at Pinterest and Instagram. Now, Jenna Kutcher, I will say, did get her start in a legitimate small business. She ran a photography business and worked as a photographer for a while. So it does kind of make sense that Instagram Instagram and Pinterest would be her areas of expertise considering those are largely visual and largely photograph based and considering she is a photographer. Although what's she gonna teach us in a course? Because if the reason she's doing well on those is that she's a professional photographer, like is she is this a photography course? I don't know, I'm not paying for it. Anyways, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of the online course games. Sometimes they can work, but it's very rare. And then on top of that, uh, this whole false scarcity thing that happens where it's like, this won't be here much longer, my course is closing tonight. None of these courses are interactive. They're always just uh, self-led things where the business guru sends you the materials and you do the course by yourself. They really only put a time limit on enrollment so that you are forced to sign up at a certain time. It's to put a false sense of scarcity on you. I think it's pretty manipulative. I don't stand for that. She believes in making our business work for us instead of the other way around. At least she didn't do for you and to you. You. I believe in making my business work three me. So she's got these courses, the Instagram lab, level up your Instagram game. Let's talk about how to go from succumbing to the Instagram popularity contest and stressing about serving the algorithm overlords to owning your influence, sharing a snapshot of life you already love and building your profitability through organic followers and real engagement. So she's got that and then she's got the Pinterest lab, then she's got the list to launch lab, which I will say email building is a very important skill that a lot of people are sleeping on. By the way, you can 
can sign up for my email list linked in the description below. Look at me hard selling to you, except it doesn't cost anything to sign up for my email list, so I don't know if that's a hard sell, although I probably will hard sell to you in my emails by being like, look, here's my book that's coming out, here's a link to it, that's kind of what you do with the email list. But anyway, I have a newsletter linked below. And she has the podcast lab, the photo lab, I guess she does sell a course on how to begin a photography business, but here's what I don't get. If your business is profitable, why do why does everyone feel the need to sell a course on how to start their business? Photography is a full-time business. I know plenty of people that do photography full-time as their main thing. So if your photography business is profitable, why do you need to sell a course to teach other people how to do photography? Unless teaching is what you're passionate about, but if that's the case, why aren't you a teacher? Why don't you become a photography teacher? I don't know. I, online course stuff is weird. I'm always like, what's your motive here? The content lab. So she's got all this stuff about content. She's got monthly live coaching with uh, some familiar faces. We got Mel Robbins right here. We've got Dave Hollis over here. We've talked about them in depth. I wouldn't be taken from them. She's got a quote from Tony Robbins who says, Jenna's done the work. She's educated herself. She leads with passion, truth, and realness. Jenna didn't stop learning and now she is a mogul. First of all, that sounds like something Rachel Hollis would say. And also this is a Rachel Hollis font that doesn't look like Tony Robbins' signature, nor does that sound like something he would actually say. In fact, it sounds like something Rachel would say and looks like Rachel's writing. So I'm wondering, like, what's going on here? First of all, we do not support Tony Robbins on this channel because he has multiple sexual harassment allegations against him. If you want to know more about the bad stuff Tony Robbins has done, first of all, I have a Tony Robbins Exposed playlist you can check out. My friend Monica and I from the channel Monica Hayworth, she and I got together and we watched the Tony Robbins I'm Not Your Guru documentary on Netflix. We also looked at some of his other stuff. He's manipulative. He is misogynistic. If you need hard proof of Tony Robbins' misogyny, then you should check out Mooncat, who's another creator here on YouTube who did a two-part series on him, where you see him live coaching couples to, like, stay in abusive relationships and things like that and telling women to just do more sexual favors. He's gross. I hate Tony Robbins. I think he's one of the worst people in the entire business guru self-help sphere. He needs more hate than he gets. Tony Robbins sucks, my dude. So if Tony Robbins is endorsing you, I guess that's good publicity, but, like, no. And speaking of Rachel Hollis, somehow Jenna Kutcher got her rise to fame in the exact same way that Rachel Hollis did. Exactly. By which I mean she went viral with a bikini photo. This is the article from a couple years ago. Curvy woman opens up about having Mr. Sixpack as her husband, inspiring thousands. So if you guys remember, we talked about this when I did many video essays on Rachel Hollis back in the day. One of Rachel's early rises to fame, other than the fact that she was a successful party planner with her chic events business where she got connected to celebrities because her husband Dave worked for Disney at an executive level and could connect her with lots of celebrities and then she planned a lot of celebrity parties. So other than that though, her claim to social media fame and relevance as an influencer in her own right came from the time in 2017 where she posted a photo of herself in a bikini where you could see all her stretch marks. She looked thin and conventionally attractive but it was still a body positive post because she had stretch marks. And by the way, I'm not taking away from that because I will say the world does place a lot of pressure on women to try to look a certain way and tell us, oh, you don't want to show that kind of body. The, the media as a whole does try to show us kind of one image of what, what they think a woman should look like. I get told I'm being a woman wrong all the time on this channel. Just look at some of my reacting to hate comments videos. So I get it. And I will never say that that, that wasn't body positive. And I think it's important to be able to love and, and celebrate your body in whatever way makes you feel good. I just think it's strange that these are going so viral as if like it's never been seen before. So anyway, Rachel posts a picture it, with her stretch marks and has this caption that's like, I love my stretch marks because I carried four children and I gave birth to them. And wait, she carried three children. She adopted one. She had three children physically and adopted one. Sorry, I had that wrong. Anyway, she was like, I had children and now I have stretch marks and I'm proud of them and I show them off. And I was like, good for you, girl. Don't know why that's worth millions of shares, but whatever. Anyway, same exact thing happened to Jenna Kutcher, except instead of it being about stretch marks, it was about nothing? It was about the fact that, that I don't understand this at all. So here's Jenna Kutcher and her husband. His name is Drew. He is a physical trainer. I believe he like works at a gym or he has like a personal fitness coaching business. He, he does physical training and that kind of thing. Good for him. You can tell because he is a physical trainer who works with clients who are doing, you know, weightlifting and training and things like that. Obviously, he's a muscular guy. He's got some pretty big muscles here. He's got some ripped abs. He's got calves that I'm jealous as hell of. Dude, 
Drew, how do I get your calves? Actually, don't answer that because I know the answer is going to be a course. It's going to be like, buy my, my calves course. I am not buying your calves course. Honestly, my calves aren't that far off from that right now. I'm looking hot. I've been weightlifting for a year and I am back to my pre-surgery numbers. What's up? Anyway, so he's super ripped and she's not ripped, I guess, is the thing. This is a conventionally attractive couple in a magazine quality photo standing in the sand. I I see this shit ever- The name Jenna Kutcher has been all over the internet from Fox News to the New York Post, Snapchat to the Daily Mail, and while we don't feel like our story is newsworthy, we're honored to get to inspire others and hopefully share more of our journey in owning our self-worth and set an example of what marriage should look like. Marriage should look like... straight people posing in the sand? I I've been doing marriage- I mean, I guess we've got Lake Michigan right here. I've posed in the sand before, but usually it's to show off my muscles. So I'm, I'm a little less modest than Drew is, even though he's more ripped than I am. I'm very vain, you guys, if you haven't noticed. I had quickly shared my heart in an Instagram post before heading out for a girls' night and almost broke the internet. I'm sure I'll have more thoughts on going viral with you guys later, but today I wanted to share an article that Yahoo posted over the weekend. About what? Like, with Rachel, she had the caption that was like, my stretch marks! Which again, I'm glad she's feeling positively about her stretch marks. It is good to feel confident in your body. And that's one thing I, you guys know, I've been critical of Rachel Hollis in the past. In fact, I will be so arrogant as to take credit for the trend of being critical of Rachel Hollis on the internet. My Girl Wash Your Face review went up on YouTube in November, or early December 2018, so... I will take credit. I will. I'm very vain as I've told you. I will say I've been critical of her, but at least she's always been like, yeah, I love my stretch marks, but also I got a boob job. Guess what? I got a boob job too. It was technically breast reduction as I was... As I mentioned before, a K-cup, I was a curing machine bopping around with K-cups and I went down seven bra sizes after surgery because I have scoliosis and there was weight on my back like hell. So I have gotten plastic surgery and I appreciate influencers who talk about plastic surgery in a positive light. I had that criticism for Brene Brown. She was shitting on plastic surgery. I think Brene Brown is better than Rachel Hollis in almost all of her advice except for the shitting on plastic surgery. Plastic Plastic surgery can be life-saving, let me tell you that. But anyway, my point is, what is, what is this picture? Like, I'm happy, this is just a couple being, walking in the sand. Why, why don't I break the internet when I post things? This is the most mundane shit. Is this milk toast? I don't know what the word milk toast means. I'm a writer, but I don't know every word, and the word milk toast has always sounded like a craft beer to me. Is this milk toast? Is this milk steak on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? What is this picture? When wedding photographer and entrepreneur Jenna Kutcher posted an Instagram photo of herself posing with her husband along with a heartfelt message, she didn't really expect the flood of supportive messages it inspired. Is there like a sob story in the caption? I'm... This is just a couple on the beach. I see this every day. Again, I can walk like three blocks to Lake Michigan and see hundreds of this. I don't understand. In the photo, Kutcher is walking on the beach with her husband, Drew Kutcher, a health business coach, and both are in their swimsuits. But while the visual is charming, the caption is what really makes an impact. In it, she recalls being sent a direct message wondering how Jenna could land a guy as beautiful as Drew. She went on to reveal, part of my insecurity with my body has stemmed from being married to Mr. Sixpack himself. Why should I, a curvy girl, get him? I feel unworthy, and when I write narratives in my head because I am not thin, I don't deserve him. The 29-year-old- Oh, I'm 29! Well, this is, this is from a couple years ago. So Jenna's only a couple years older than me. This shit's wild. I'm old enough to be a boss babe. She continued her caption with the best response to that old DM. This man has embraced every curve, every dimple, pound, and pimple for the last 10 years and has always reminded me that I'm beautiful even when my inner dialogue doesn't match. So yes, my thighs kiss, my arms are big, and my bum is bumpy, but there's just more of me for him to love and I chose the man that could handle all that and so much more. Okay, so the... The picture here is uh, supposed to be, as I said earlier, uh, he's got a six pack. You don't even know she doesn't have a six pack. Her stomach is covered. So it's supposed to be that he has a six pack and she doesn't. But how do we even know she doesn't have a six pack? Her stomach's just covered. If this low quality shit can go viral, then why haven't I gone viral? Someone make me go viral. Someone's gonna take that out of context and be like, Savvy's bitter that she's never gone viral. I mean, I guess I kind of am. No, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that level of criticism. Um, I'll say that there is some power in responding to hate messages. If someone sent Jenna a message saying, your husband's better looking than you are, uh, first of all, they were probably a troll. I get messages like that all the time. Not specifically about my relationship or anything like that, but they're usually things like... Actually, I did get one like that before where it was like... 
please, for your spouse's sake, trim your armpit hair and grow your head hair out. You don't look like a woman. I got things like that. I get comments that tell me I'm not being a woman right all the time and that I'm like too masculine where it's like, I'm not even masculine. I'm the whole foot scale at once, okay? So I'll get comments like that and I respond to them. I make videos and respond to them to get content out of it because I'm an online entrepreneur as well. I understand the algorithm, Jenna. I got you. Oh, it just clicked. That's why she did it for the clicks. <laughs> Obviously. But what I don't understand is why people clicked on it and cared. I don't understand why people cared. Again, she very well could have a six pack under there. You don't know what part of her body she works the most. She could be doing ab stuff all day, but I guess she's saying that she, she doesn't. Second of all, in what universe is a big ass undesirable to men? Men are all about the big ass. And I'm not saying all men, hashtag not all men. I'm just saying that the majority of men I know who are interested in women want women with a thick ass. That's all I'm saying. Next thing, I don't understand why she's equating being curvy with being overweight. First of all, I don't even know if she's overweight. I have no idea about the intricacies of Jenna's body. This is kind of the first time even delving into her at all. But the term curvy, in my experience, is not, like, you could be a ripped bodybuilder and be curvy. That's my intention as I continue with weightlifting, is that I'm going to be a ripped, a ripped ass guy that looks like Drew over here, except that I'm a woman and I have a very like femininely shaped body naturally, so I'm still gonna be curvy because your chest to waist to hip ratio, right? Isn't that what it's about? Isn't that what being curvy is? Like if your waist and your rib cage is set closer together in circumference than how far your hips are set, that's not, that's just, that's curvy. It doesn't have anything to do with how much you weigh. Cause she's asking, she's talking like, cause she said like every pound, uh, their bumps or whatever. Like these things she's talking about aren't related to being curvy. Isn't being curvy the hourglass? Isn't that what it means? Because there's an hourglass shaped body. Like there's like the pear shaped body. There's like the up and down line. There's like a straight up and down type of shaped body. Like there's like a couple different body types for women. Women have a lot of body type variation. Anyway, my point is this doesn't make any sense to me. I'm so confused. I just want to make it very clear. If this picture made Jenna feel good about her body and made her and her husband happy, like, I'm glad. I'm glad that they're happy. I'm glad that that's all working. I'm just very confused about this, but that could be because I'm literally neurodivergent and queer. <laughs> all right, let's continue with this. And it talks about how she struggled with, you know, infertility and talking about... Um, I, okay, I get that. Like, I, oh, I've never, uh, tried to conceive children, so I don't understand that specific struggle, but I have struggled with physical disabilities and having reproductive health issues that I've needed to see doctors for and things like that, so I can understand, uh, feeling body dysmorphic after your body has failed you many times. I have felt that way before, so I do understand why Jenna might take it to heart if someone says something negative about her body. I get it. I absolutely get it. I, I've, I've been there, Jenna. I totally understand. So I will not uh, snark on that too hard. I'm just, I just think it's like kind of basic. Not that she's body positive. I just think the photo is kind of basic. I think the fact that it went viral is kind of basic. And I think it is also important to make a point that like, I guess there is sometimes a stereotype that like people assume um like the woman in the relationship is going to be the one that like is going to conform to all of social conventions for what is most attractive and that the man doesn't have to because we you don't need to value men for their appearance, you value them for their money and power or whatever. There's all those like sexist assum assumptions out there, which I don't uh, find true at all, but some people believe that, I guess. So there can there's kind of an element of that that I guess she's kind of showing, you know, bucking the stereotype a little bit. Oh, that's cool, they're a workout couple. Fitness and overall health play a huge role in the couple's life together, so they do everything from run marathons to participate in CrossFit and attend yoga classes together. Oh, cute, I love workout couples. So anyway, just like Rachel, uh, Jenna also went viral for a bikini photo. Well, not a bikini photo, this isn't a bikini. If it were a bikini, I would know whether she had six pack abs or not. This is a one piece bathing suit, I don't know. Either way, she looks great, he looks Looks great. Good for you guys. Glad you're a happy couple. Glad everything's working out. So anyway, the reason I'm making this video is that Jenna Kutcher has a book coming out. Boom! Here it is. She says, surprise, I wrote a book. Call it on my book lovers, my avid readers, my gold diggers. By the way, gold digger is the name of her podcast. It's like a play on gold digger. You're not a gold digger. You're a gold digger. You follow your goals. I mean, I'm bisexual. I love puns. Like, I can't, I can't fault her, dude. I can't. She's been working on How Are You Really? My very first book. All right. So before I look at what the book is about, I've already pre-ordered it without looking at what it's about because I know I need to review it. When I see someone like Jenna, who has made a successful career for herself on the internet, starting as a photographer with a camera. I like making visual media as well. I get it. I love the small business life. I think it's fantastic. 
I want to see what I can learn from Jenna about running a small business. I'm really hoping that her book is going to teach me uh, the basics of starting a small business. I mean, I already have started when I've been running a small business for almost five years, so I don't know if I need the basics, but I think maybe it could be helpful if she would teach her readers that. I hope that uh, she maybe goes into some of the more advanced stuff since I gotta be real, Jenna's definitely making more money than I am. She has over a million followers on Instagram. She's got a much larger audience than I do, so I could learn from her. I want to learn from her how I can grow my audience, get more clients, uh, how she scaled her business, because scaling a small business is really hard. I want to learn all about that. Jenna, what can you teach me? Let me say something that I think might astonish you, especially if you've known me for any length of time. This book is not a business book. What? Then what did I pay for? Here's the thing. I always want to learn from people who are successful in business. What do I want to learn from them? I want to learn about business because that's what you're successful in and that's what you can teach me something about and I want to soak up that knowledge from you. What are you going to teach me if not about business? That's what you're known for. Are you going to teach me about how to pose on the beach? Because I'm already good at that. I told you guys I'm vain. I'm committing to it today. <laughs> After educating thousands of women across the globe, I realized the same things kept coming up over and over for all of us. Self-doubt, imposter syndrome, unfulfilled dreams, fears and anxieties, and a deep audible cry to have a meaningful life and legacy. It all became so achingly clear that to work on your business, you first have to work on yourself. No, Jenna. I don't know anything about your personal life and I don't care to. All I know is that you're successful in business. You're not a therapist. If I want to learn how to work on myself, I'll go to a therapist. I want to learn about business from you. Why do you think you're better qualified to write about personal growth than about business? Is it because personal growth sells better? Is that it? I'm so confused. Why? It's the guidebook to enjoy being alive and not merely suffering through it. Again, if I want to end my suffering, I'd see a therapist. Jordan Peterson voice, this is what everybody misses. Anti-Jordan Peterson rhetoric. The problem here is that the US doesn't have universal health care. That is where all of this stems from. People can't afford to go to therapy and there's still stigmas against it and there isn't enough education about it. And that is why people end up turning to self-help gurus instead of to therapists. And it's a problem. And by the way, there are flaws in the therapy system. There are therapists that work unethically and there are therapists that aren't gonna work for every single person. And that's why we need more education about the process of finding the right therapist for you. I'm gonna go into this in depth on Friday when I release my big video on Teal Swan, who's probably the biggest example of this of all time. I already don't have self-doubt and imposter syndrome and unfulfilled dreams. And I do have anxiety, but that's kind of a, that's, that's, that's the parent category of what OCD is under. So that's just a diagnosed condition that I take medication for. Uh, I already feel like I have a meaningful life and legacy and maybe other people don't so like maybe this book is more targeted at them and that's fine if I'm not your target audience but like this sounds so disappointing. It's the guidebook to enjoy being alive and not merely suffering through it. This is my owner's manual to owning a life rather than the other way around. Are you also going to tell me to make life happen for me and not to me and then we can we can add the numbers up and divide it by two and take the average and have life happen three us instead? Is that what we're going to do? Chocked full of soul unlocking guidance. What does that mean? To unlock you forward in a way that moves you closer to your heartbeat, your people, and the dang good life that awaits you. She dang good life. She definitely got that from Dave Hollis. That's how Dave talks. Get this. My book isn't where I've shared my next business, next five business secrets. I'm here to tell you what makes all of that other stuff worth it. But Jenna, I want to learn about business from you and I don't want to pay for your course to do it. That's why she's, that's why she's doing it. That's why she won't write about business in the book because she wants to sell that in a course because you can sell courses for more money just because they're called courses. You can sell courses for hundreds to thousands of dollars and people will say, well, it's a class. And you know, in college you pay thousands of dollars for classes. So classes are worth more than books. You don't pay thousands of dollars for books, right? Books, the market values books at a cheaper price overall. So people can get away with selling courses for something more expensive. That's frustrating. I'm pretty sure that's why she's doing it because why else would she write this book that, ugh, Jenna. Because all those things we love, the life parts we want, need us to be all in. Is this just gonna be business guru magnetic poetry? Is she just gonna vomit cliches at me? We need to know our why. Oh! <laughs> we need to know our why, oh my God. Again, I could have fed, I could have fed a thousand business gurus into a machine learning program and they could have come up with exactly this copy. This isn't creative, Jenna. I'll share the stories of slowly uncovering my own why and I'll help you guide you to digging up your own. Imagine like Big Bird on Sesame Street. It's like today's video is brought to you by the letter Y and he uncovers it and is like, I'm uncovering my Y. That, that would be funny. Then she talks about her podcast. Who is this? So 
So probably not me is my guess. Since I've been in the thick of this book for longer and deeper than anyone else, I think I can speak to this quite confidently. This book is for you. Oh, she said it is for me. It's not even three me. It's for me. This book is for me. Um, well, I was gonna consider in the review maybe going easier on her under the guise of like, maybe I'm just not your target audience, but she explicitly says right here that it's for me. If you're looking for ways to protect your peace, this book is for you. Well, I don't know what that means, so I have no idea if I'm doing that. If you want to know what it's like to pursue a passionate life without spiraling into making your whole life about your career, this book is for you. I already do that pretty well. If you have ever felt like fear was your greatest obstacle to living out a vision you have for yourself and your future, I usually feel like money's my biggest obstacle. So again, you should have written about business. If you've been wondering where I, and any of the money and success will come and if it will be half as satisfying as they promised, this book is- I guess I am wondering when the money and success will come. As long as she's not going to teach me to manifest it, then I'll, 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 I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and assume it's for me. If you want to create a life that is fueled by both peace and purpose, this book is for you. No, I'd really, like, I'd rather have a life fueled by chaos, to be honest. <laughs> I'm a really chaotic person. Again, put me on the alignment chart. I am a very clear chaotic bisexual. Don't, I don't even, I don't even touch any of the others. If you feel like you've been in cycles of pleasing everyone else, achieving nonstop and getting a gold star without ever feeling like any of that was for you. Are we going to take a shot every time she says for you? I mean, no, I have to film another video after this. I can't be drunk. If you've been terrified of letting the good things happen for you, not to you, for you, letting the good things happen for you, why would I be terrified of good things happening? Why wouldn't I want good things to happen? I'm very confused. What line of logic is leading to this? To put it simply, this book is for the one who says, screw all the shiny stuff. I want to know what it really takes to build a life I love. I already do love my life. I guess self-help isn't for me. I should probably stop reading self-help. Maybe that's the problem. I'm a pretty content person and I keep reading self-help being like, this book is dumb. Maybe that's because I don't need it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Anyway, I already pre-ordered it now, so it's too late to go back. But guess what? Guys, remember uh, about two years ago when Rachel Hollis released her book, Didn't See That Coming, and along with the pre-order, you got a free gift and the free gift was like a short little one hour course. Well, if you didn't think that Jenna is exactly like Rachel just because they both got famous off of viral bathing suit photos, they also both do the same thing about free courses with the book pre-order. Here we go. She says, thank you for pre-ordering. The fun is about to begin starting in your inbox. I got the email already. Damn, she is balancing those books on her head very well. I have too much scoliosis to ever hope to be able to do that. I am way too asymmetrical. As a thank you for pre-ordering my book, you're getting free instant access to my complete 60-day Instagram toolkit. All right, guys, I am going to take Jenna's course and I will be reviewing it on this channel uh, within the next two weeks. I've got a couple other videos coming up. I got to work on my big teal swan video that's going to come out this Friday. I've got to work on a video about rainbow capitalism for Pride Month. I've got to work on a couple other things. Oh, Gabby Bernstein sunk to a new low with this really gross course she's running. It's like so gross. I'm going to talk about Gabby Bernstein a little bit. So I've got a bunch of other videos I got to do first, but I am then going to, uh, I'm gonna review this course as well. So get ready for that, y'all. So this is Jenna Kutcher's upcoming book. Again, I can't give it a review when I haven't read it yet, so I'm not saying that it's good or bad. All I'm saying is that I do get really frustrated when I see a bunch of people who have successful businesses and have advice to offer to newer entrepreneurs instead taking this self-help route because maybe that's more profitable or something like that. So going into it, I am gonna be a little skeptical of it, but I am also gonna give it a fair shake as I do with every book that I read. So guys, that review will be coming probably next month because the book is coming out at the end of this month. I will see you guys again on Friday for another video, but in the meantime, continue to support small businesses and have a fantastic start to your day. Bye! Get you some nuts! There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.